Hello, I'm Michael Gigani, and this is Straight Talk. With me today are two guests. Lokin Hay, you're the chairman of the Democratic Party. You're also a district councillor. Tommy Chung, you also are a district councillor, and you were a student leader during the Umbrella Movement. Uh, now you're a district councillor. Now, uh, first question, uh, a law has been gazetted uh, that all district councillors must now swear allegiance, right, to the basic law. Uh, you're both district councillors. This was not a requirement before. Will you, Tommy, will you, will you uh, swear to this? Um, I think I will swear it, um, if uh, the ordinance uh, has been passed in the Legislative Council, because I think um, we have to bear the responsibility of being a representative, which representing our district and the people who vote for us um, in 2019. So that um, I think um, we should uh, bear in mind that our responsibility is to be the representative until the day we couldn't do again. But are your constituents asking you to swear allegiance? Um, actually, by uh, friends or volunteers, even the resi uh, residents, um, they also agree with that um, I should swear because um, they think um, I should sit um, um, on my uh, on my district councillors um, until the day that maybe we maybe suffer disqualifications, um, maybe one or two years later. But um, at this moment, I, I think there is a risk. There is still a political risk uh, for us because. Um, um, actually, we don't know what is the standard of, um, uh, of after you, you have overtaken and maybe they, they will think under the standard of the patriot, I haven't been uh, well, you know, whether you're patriotic pa enough. Patriot not, you know, I'm looking at, I'm going to, now, this oath has a long list of conditions which was spelled out by uh, the Constitutional Affairs Secretary. Uh, you cannot collude with foreign forces. Uh, you cannot insult the flag or the national anthem. You cannot support independence or self-determination. You cannot do an official referendum like what happened in 2019. These are the conditions. Will you swear to it? Well, I think we are still looking at it because um, the, the law itself, it is not passed yet. Uh, we will look at the past law. Uh, but of course, I think these kinds of things, uh, uh, the, the so-called negative list, uh, is very vague and it's very broad. Uh, uh, and you can actually, when in there, uh, by, by, by accident, because you know, there's a terms that, that said, oh, maybe you can uh, tend to uh, harm the general interests of Hong Kong, and you can never define that. So um, I think this risk of uh, being uh, disqualified or being said uh, you're not uh, taking your oath very sincerely, this, this risk, this risk uh, is, is here. But um, I think there are a lot of risks out there, and if there's risks and we don't do anything... Well, uh, some district councillors say they will not uh, take this yeah. oath of allegiance. But both of you, you say you will take it. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm still considering. Uh, you're but, still considering, but, but you're going to take it, yeah, Tom. I'm going to take it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, uh, and I think, um, apart from what Tommy has said, uh, that our promises to the people are four years, that uh, the district council uh, is actually voted in just in 2019. Uh, we also actually uh, signed a declaration when we uh, run for election. Everybody has to sign it, which said uh, we uh, pay allegiance to the basic law and to the Hong Kong SAL. So um, I think I plead allegiance very sincerely at that time. And I've served the Hong Kong people. I serve Hong Kong as a whole. And I think uh, I, I respect the basic law and I follow the basic law. Uh, I think the government is not following the basic law. So um, it, is, it is a matter of uh, interpretation Interpretation for them, of course. Both of you won in 2019 at the height of the protest, the anti-government protest, uh, and uh, young people like yourselves uh, won most of the district council seats. Mm. That never happened before, right? You won in a landslide, the so-called opposition, right? Now, it's been said in the past few weeks over and over and over again that only patriots can govern Hong Kong. And uh, it has now been being defined that 
aside from executive council, the government, the legislative council, that even district councillors must be patriots mm. uh, because you still have a role, although you don't have a governing role, but you have a role in looking up the district matters, right? Mm. I'm going to answer both of you this question. Are you a patriot, Tommy? Um, I think we couldn't define ourselves as a patriot because um, I think it's kind of political definition um, prov uh, provided by Beijing government and also uh, um, and the Hong Kong government is now implemented um, this kind of uh, definition into the ordinance we are talking about these days. And uh, of course, we, uh, I think um, if we define ourselves as patriot... But what do you define may, yourself but, then? Beijing would not agree that we are patriot because we, we are from the opposition camp. And of course, um, I think, um, uh, of course, as the district councillors, I think we have um, obeyed the basic law. We have, um, at least we, we don't, we would not touch the, um, the areas that are banned by the national security law because um, although we, we may have some different opinion on it, but it's but you won't it, break it, the national security law. Not break the national security law. Um, I don't think the district councillors, most of us, would break that uh, national security law. So that I don't know whether this kind of act ha wouldn't be defined as the uh, patriot. But but you know the. the area or, or the definition is so weak and, and so weak and which may, may maybe just like um, like the people after the off-taking um, they couldn't do something harm the people's interest um, in Hong Kong but you, you couldn't say that like um, if you still um, like if you ban some ordinance inside the legislative council that that may harm the uh, that's like um, test paying from the uh, co uh, conglomerates or co from the uh, property owners. That may that maybe you, you are protecting those people' interests, but you are harm harming the uh, most the ma majority people' interests. Is is that so called breaking the off taking? Uh, so that I I couldn't understand the list to be provided by the government. What about you? Are you a patriot? Well, uh, I think I'm much more patriot than a lot of patriots out there. Uh, at, least I didn't, at least I didn't have a UK passport and I have to give it up before I became the chairman of the district council, like Andrew Loom. Uh, he, he'd give up his in, uh, He's UK, president of the legislative council. UK passport. Uh, uh, he, he only do this to become the chairman of the legislative council uh, i think i'm much more patriot uh, my family my family they all are hong kong citizen all are chinese citizen i think i am in a much more patriot background than them as well so you so won't leave hong kong i won't leave hong kong hong kong is my home and i don't know why uh, people keep on telling us to you know those pro beijing people oh if you don't like it just go why should i go hong kong is my home and 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 why should me be the one to go away? Well, will you leave Hong Kong? I won't leave Hong Kong because it just... Do you have a foreign passport? I don't have. Uh, my BNO, actually, I didn't... I didn't... Um, renew it. Renew uh, since 2005. But you can still use it if you want to go to the uh, UK. I don't think I will renew it because um, I think if we have to show <coughs> our promise to Hong Kong or show our... Uh, um, future um, routing in Hong Kong. I, I don't think we need to renew the BNO passport. I only, I, I have just only the HKSAL passport. Uh, if I go to the foreign countries, I, I think I, I will still use that passport. You know, you know uh, on, on Sunday, uh, over 50 of the opposition, uh, some of them legislative councillors, some of them activists, some of them district councillors, so many of them have been here before. Hmm. You know. Uh, they were asked to go to the police station and uh, they were, many of them going to be charged with the national security law. Uh, uh, a lot of people, uh, 47. There's some sort of worry that because um, when the national, uh, national security law, uh, when it is used, uh, it is used in a way that we have never seen before. Uh, for example, uh, 
coming into a primary and asking the people who they wanted to be the, their representatives or to represent the pan-democrats to actually uh, run for the election. How does it uh, offend or, or be, being an offense in, in any way? And, and if you say, oh, you, you should not ask the or force the government to, re to resign. You should not force the chief executive to resign. But come on, in the basic law, it is we, can, allowed. We, can, we, can, we can make her resign, not just by uh, vetoing the, the budget, we can also uh, impeach her. So if anyone run for the election and said, we will impeach her, does it mean uh, us? T Tommy, uh, before the break, uh, are you scared? Um, I think the restrictions on the political participation is being larger and larger throughout the days. But I, I think every one of us um, have some worries about it. I, I don't think I'm scared, but we have um, certain worries on how the um, national security law will, uh, will act in the future okay. days. I'm gonna take a quick break. Susan, don't go away. Us. This is Straight Talk. With me today are two district councillors. Look in here, you're the chairman of the Democratic Party and you were a former student leader. Now you are a district councillor. We're talking about uh, whether you, both of you, are afraid because over 50 opposition members have been arrested. Uh, they were accused of violating the national security law for participating in a primary election to choose candidates for LegCo elections last September, which were canceled anyway. Now you say you both of you are worried, but you're not scared, right? You're not scared. Now, but then the thing is, um, by swearing, you say you both of you will swear, uh, take that oath to observe the basic law, but in a way that oath forbids you to oppose the government, but you are both from the opposition. Mm. Can you do your job, Tommy, and, and, and say you are an opposition member, but you cannot do certain things like I listed before, uh, insult the flag or support independence? None of you ever supported independence, uh, but because, because the law is so vague, you don't know what is, is not allowed. How can you be an opposition? Um, I think we are trying to carry out our duty um, because um, I think under certain risks and pressure from Beijing or from the Hong Kong government, of course, um, we will still need to find a way out to represent the people, uh, to serve our community and serve Hong Kong. And of course, um, I don't think we have, to, uh, we have to change our attitude to, towards the government or change our ideas um, on the political view I think we, we should speak out the truth. And we- Do you I, dare? I, yeah, I, I still think we, we, are, we have the responsibility to uh, tell the truth. If they think this kind of act is also an offense, and then I, I don't think um, the people of Hong Kong will accept it. Can you be part of the opposition looking here with all the restrictions? Uh, of course, I will keep on being an opposition. Uh, I don't know how long... What are you going to oppose? I, I don't know how long the government can uh, endure us. Uh, and, but what uh, are you going to oppose? I don't think the government can endure for well, very long. Well, I think it, it depends on what the government do. If the government is doing something really wrong and, and really uh, harmful, uh, then of, of course, like the extradition bill, we, we oppose really... Uh, vocally. Uh, for example, like uh, recently when the uh, 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 financial secretary, he announced his budget and he sent out those 5,000 consumer vouchers, uh, we think we should, he should just pay but out you money. Know, you, you, you've, you've lost your platform to oppose because none of the opposition are in legislative council anymore. And number two, uh, all the reports say central government is planning to overhaul Hong Kong's political system. You may not even be a district councillor anymore. If this thing is overhauled, you know, they may disqualify mm. all of you. Or and they, uh, they there just have been a lot of by the district council as a whole. Well <laughs> there's been there's been a lot of suggestions that this they should 
not allow people to be elected to district councils. They should fill them up with uh, patriotic people from the uh, from from uh, National People's Congress Advisory Committee and so on. Those are suggestions. And another thing they're going to take away from you, which I think probably will happen, district councils are part of the election committee for the chief executive. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have got, I think, 117 yeah. of those seats now because you won in a landslide in 2019. And they're going to remove the right of district councillors to select the chief executive. Mm. What's left in your role? Uh, I think it's not, um, it's, I, I, I don't think so worry about the, um, the changing in the constitution, constitutional um, in Hong Kong because um, actually this kind of suppression is not, the, is, is, is not happening um, on these days. It's happening since 2020. And of course, they have the power to change the whole political system. Yeah. Like they, they can disqualify the district council as a whole. They can, uh, they can change the seats of um, the components inside the functional constituency or even the geographical constituency. But they're planning to do that. Yeah. There's some reports say they will do that. I, I think actually details has, has a, hasn't come yet. So I couldn't um, discuss. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, Look yeah. in here, you said that how can you, dis how can you disqualify all the district councillors? Well, I think, I think we, we just couldn't let them define us. Uh, we, we came from the people and we came from the community. And that is... But you won in a landslide in 2019. Yeah, and, and that is where our root is. Uh, if the government thinks uh, the opposition uh, parties or politicians can no longer exist in Hong Kong system, then so be it. And we will just keep on being there. Uh, but then you uh, will still oppose outside the district council. Yeah, of course. If, if I'm disqualified, I'm sure I'll keep on doing what I'm doing now. Uh, I, don't, I don't stop just because the government well, disqualifies you know, I, I, us. I noticed both of you are wearing black, uh, you know, which is a, a signature for people uh, during the 2019 protests. Uh, Tommy, you were also uh, a leading uh, a student leader in, during the umbrella movement as well, uh, along with others, including Joshua Wong, who is now in jail. Uh, now, um, in hindsight, tell me this, uh, in hindsight, uh, both of you, look and hear you first, was it wrong to uh, have those protests in 2019, such violent protests on many occasions? Uh, was it wrong to have the umbrella movement? Because if those things had not happened, we may not now be in a situation where the central government wants to overhaul the political uh, system, right? In hindsight, was that a wrong thing to do? Well, I think we are just, uh, we can only act on that time. We couldn't look back into history and and, 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 and say whether or not we should do that and do, do that. Because we're, 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 we're living in a, a in an authentic world, which we can only see the options we have in hands. Uh, so I think at 2019 or 2020, uh, the protests escalated because of the government's, uh, they, they, they just don't want to hear, they just don't want to listen, and they, and they don't take responsibility. And that is the reaction from the people. So I don't think there is something called right and wrong here. Uh, and we don't know whether or not uh, if you do something, uh, the central government will do another thing. But, Tom, but they will just keep on crashing Hong Kong people if we keep on our de democratic movement. Do you regret taking part in the umbrella movement? Do you regret supporting the 2019 protests? I, d I don't regret because um, uh, I think actually that time is kind of um, reactions from people that because d due to the um, government failures, if the government really governed the, uh, the Hong Kong um, effectively and know what the people need and listen to the people's voice, I think those protests would not happen. Um, of course, you, you, you may say that um, um, we, we may regret, regret but those protests if, if we know... Need, need not have been yeah. so violent with throwing of petrol bombs and so on. Um, I think the rest is history and we, we need to look forward. Um, of course, um, in, in the later times, I don't think that kind of protest will happen because under the national security law or under the um, 
the succession from, from the government. Oh, of course, we, we need to find a way out because um, um, try, uh, I, I think being opposition in Hong Kong is um, facing a very huge difficulties due to the um, changing in these political systems or, uh, the, to uh, or the decreased tolerance in the Be from the Beijing government and Hong Kong government. I think um, Hong Kong people will still think there should be the existence of the opposition to uh, restrict the powers or restrict the, uh, the expansion of powers from the government. You know, I want to ask, Logan, I've only got two more minutes left. Uh, you know, uh, the people expect there to be an opposition, but it seems like there's very little the opposition can do. Do you expect that the people will be able to protest in the future once the pandemic is over? Or you think protesting, large-scale protests of a million people, that's no longer the case in Hong Kong? Uh, I think people's uh, rights to protest is enshrined in the basic law. If our government said uh, they wanted everybody to respect the basic law, I would ask the government to respect that right. That right should be granted to Hong Kong people right now because the pandemic is not an excuse. Uh, we, you saw a lot of people going to the beaches, going to sports grounds, going to shopping. Mm. That is not uh, related to the pandemic. It is a total crackdown yeah. on Hong Kong people's right. So I think uh, in, the, in the future or right now, Hong Kong people uh, should be able to go to the strike and go to protest and, and the po police should just allow that. I've got one more minute left. Tommy, I'll give you the last word. Uh, do you expect to see protests like the ones we saw in 2019, uh, where uh, many of them turned violent? Do you think people would dare come back out and do that again in the future? Um, if the government governs well, I don't think that will happen again. But you know, um, in the history, it is not just only political events that will cause th these kinds of protests. There may be other kinds of um, risks that the government may face. So that if the government really knows the people wants and also listen to people's views, I don't think that kind of protest will happen. But of course, they will. They, they of course they certainly need to allow the um, the opposition to be exist or to can have the rights to participate inside the political system. I've got to end it there. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Good evening.